Six years in crypto when I first got in. Bought Ethereum three to seven dollars. The goal is the same. The mission is the same. It's always been the same. The principles are aligned the same way they were six years ago. Bitcoin is becoming a hedge against monetary inflation. Ethereum is becoming the standard for financial applications as well as any application. Web 3.0, you guys are standing on the cusp of innovation right now as we speak. There's never been a better opportunity to make money. Literally in a, a one in a lifetime opportunity. We're not gonna see anything grow this big or this exponential in the next hundred years. You're one of the lucky few people to be in this market. I'm super passionate about cryptocurrency. Nothing's changing. I don't care about the China ban. I don't care about the infrastructure bill. I don't care about all the regulation coming to DeFi. Let me show you something right here. Things that didn't exist 15 years ago. iPhone, Instagram, TikTok, Bitcoin, WhatsApp, Zoom, Uber, Airbnb, iPad, Snapchat, Kettle. You get the point. All of these are the biggest applications on planet Earth. When in doubt, zoom out. Cancel out the noise. It's as simple as that. In this video, we're gonna go over the recent news when it comes to macroeconomics, Bitcoin news, cryptocurrency news, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna be talking about three altcoins that can double, triple, whatever. The, the percentage increase is irrelevant, but it is extremely undervalued right now, and I think in the month of October, it can do really, really well. Keep watching. Alex back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin news, macroeconomics, cryptocurrency, DeFi news, as well as towards the end of this video, I'm going to talk about three altcoins, three altcoins that I am accumulating, okay, that I've been accumulating and I plan on getting more because in October we think bull run is going to continue. We think it's going to be really bullish, at least for altcoins, and I'm going to lay out all the details of my argument in this video. If you appreciate the content, do us both a favor, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with a friend. I talk about cryptocurrency, entrepreneurship. I don't accept sponsorships. All this research is mine and mine only. I run this like by myself. As you can see the background, I'm just moving into my new office, so I messed up. But you guys are here for the research, not for my beautiful background. Let's jump into the topic of discussion. If we go over to macro news today, um, basically this was really cool. I thought this was interesting. I want to play this out loud for you guys. This is their bill, 2,500 pages if you take a look at $3.5 trillion price tag and you do the math, that's $1,400,000,000 for every page of this. This is their bill, 2,500 pages. If you take a look at $3.5 trillion price tag and you do their bill, this is their bill, 2,500 pages. If you take a look at $3.5 trillion price tag and you do the math, that's $1,400,000,000 for every page of this bill. And they want to pass it this week. How many Democrats do you think have read this? Think Nancy Pelosi's read it? Think Chuck Schumer's read it? Do you think Joe Biden, who is desperately begging Democrats to pass it, do you think he's read it? Do you think he knows what's in it? That's basically the gist when it comes to the United States. Um, there's a huge infrastructure bill trying to be passed through Congress. Um, and what we're going to be talking about is the cryptocurrency aspect of this infrastructure bill. Uh, here's another point uh, by Willie Wu. He wired 16K USD to pay a small bill. The receiving bank blocked it. Uh, they wanted to provide a police report and a resume. The bottom here is basically the point. They say USD is a good medium exchange, but this is a lie. It is terrible. USD has been weaponized via the banking system. It's now a medium of national defense. It's true. Uh, they're basically trying to get every single detail on your life, including you know what's going to happen in this infrastructure bill where any electronic transfer of $600 has to be reported to uh, the IRS. This is kind of scary to be completely honest with you guys. During these meetings, as you can see here, somebody was basically talking about the cryptocurrency transaction proposal, Biden's proposal for banks to report every transaction over $600 to the IRS, um, and including cryptocurrencies. 
Uh, basically, what she was saying is, as you can see here, banks do not work for the IRS. This is invasive of privacy. Wyoming's people will literally find alternatives to traditional banks. Basically, the point here is that they are forcing people to report on every $600 transaction. So if you send something through, for example, Cash App, PayPal, it doesn't matter. You have to report on this. And this is like extremely invasive. Uh, and, you know, like I said, this is kind of being snuck into this huge infrastructure bill. They don't know exactly what's going on. And this crypto regulation is being snuck into it. So this is actually really bad. Um, not only is that bad, but obviously China is going through some major uh, macroeconomic issues. Again, I'm not an economist in any way, shape or form, but you can see uh, what's pretty much going on. The hints are obvious, right? So China's hidden local government debt has swelled to more than half the size of the economy, according to economists at Goldman Sachs Group, who said the government will need to be flexible in dealing with this as revenue is already under pressure due to the slowdown in landslides. This is referring to what happened with Evergrande, right? The total debt of the local government financing vehicles rose about 53 trillion or 8.2 trillion in USD at the end of last year from 16 trillion in 2013. The Economist wrote in a report that's equal to about 52% of gross domestic product and is larger than the amount of official outstanding government debt. So the economy doesn't really make sense right now. They're, they're pretty much printing themselves out of every situation and it's getting kind of scary. Uh, if we come over here, you can see uh, that there's been big problems with you know United States national debt um, and them having to increase it and basically, in other words, print more money to make up for all the you know uh, shortcomings that they had. Right, so it's getting kind of weird. So as you can see in headlines, they're trying to avoid a government shutdown by printing more money. Basically, uh, Wednesday, lawmakers had reached an agreement to avoid government shutdown Friday, extending government spending until December 3rd. As you can see here, the, the House on Wednesday approved the standalone debt limit measure, but that too is almost certain to fail in the Senate. You know, Janet Yellen has warned uh, that without congressional action, the U.S. risk a disastrous default around October 18th. So obviously, this is becoming a huge problem. And as you can see here, Republicans have said they won't vote for the increase to the government borrowing ability as Democrats prepare to spend $3.5 trillion on social programs via separate legislation. So in general, they're trying to get this to pass so they can print more money. Uh, they're kind of shooting it down. Democrats themselves remain at odds with the plan. The U.S. House is scheduled to vote on Thursday on Biden's $550 billion infrastructure package, but progressive Democrats have pledged to vote it down uh, without action on the broader social spending measure. So in general, they're fighting back and forth. They're trying to get, you know, push their own agendas, but there's huge problems happening. Inflation's rising. You see it in China. We see the economic system cracking slowly but surely. The question here is, you know, these are like short-term fixes. In the grand scheme of things, the foundational you know, issues in the economy are being solved by Bitcoin, right? That's the whole point. We talk about this all the time. We're just seeing the signs. We're talking about big economy. So it's not going to happen overnight. Maybe it even takes five, 10 more years. Um, you know, maybe they keep printing themselves out of issues. Eventually, life and nature, right? Everything goes up. Everything comes down, right? That's just the way it is. It doesn't just continuously go up. Uh, if you look at the stock market, um, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's just going straight up. Eventually, we need a correction, recession, depression, uh, whatever the case is, to fix all the issues that's happening right now with inflation. And when that happens, you already know the hedge against monetary inflation will rise. If you look at Bitcoin's price, uh, this is the channel we drew out yesterday. Uh, we have like a nice green candlestick uh, on Bitcoin's price. We're currently sitting at 43,000. I do expect to make a decision at the top of the channel. I don't know. It depends on what's going to happen. When we get there, um, I'll probably make an official buy or sell call in the Fundamental Secrets group. If you want to get access, go to the link in the description below. But in general, guys, this is what you should be looking at. You should be looking at this channel for Bitcoin's price. Bitcoin moves the market. Um, it could move it down. It could move it up. It just depends on what's going on um, when it comes to daily price action. In other news, we see El Salvador showing some insights into their volcano mining uh, with Bitcoin. This is really nice. As you can see here, he's saying first steps, they're turning volcanoes into Bitcoin mining farms. So this is obviously positive for the environment, uh, natural renewable energy, and also, of course, positive for their people. Because if they keep accumulating Bitcoin, and as you can see, he's actually incentivizing people to use Bitcoin, you can save 20 cents on your gas if you buy uh, the gas with Bitcoin. That's pretty crazy. Um, if he keeps doing this, he's basically getting the people of El Salvador to adopt a hedge against monetary inflation. Um, and kind of canceling out the powers of the United States World Reserve currency and you know the tie that they have on the world, basically. This is like leadership at its finest. Even though we have people that don't advocate for Bitcoin and you know there's people out there, of course, rioting and there's people in El Salvador protesting against Bitcoin. He's kind of like 
pushing the nation toward prosperity, if that makes sense. And we could see other countries adopt it. This is one really quick article I want to show you guys. This guy was basically uh, rich from Dogecoin. You really do not want to be this guy. He became like a millionaire with Dogecoin and he just held it through this whole entire dip. You want to take profit. This is not the way you invest. And I can say that because I became a millionaire with less than $10,000 worth of USD invested in crypto. So I can literally tell you right now that this is not the way to do it. A fool and his money are soon parted, okay? Let me say that again. A fool and his money are soon parted. If you don't deserve the money, if you didn't do anything to get it, if you just got rich really quickly, and this is why you see this with artists, um, you see this with people that win the lotto, a fool and his money are soon parted. So don't be a fool, take profit. Basically, this, he just lost so much money on this dip. Uh, and Dogecoin has no like real value except for you know the community aspect, which is value, don't get me wrong. But you know, just don't be this guy. Please take profit on your cryptocurrency. I just wanted to highlight there very, very scary things. You don't want to lose your whole entire net worth in Dogecoin. Also, again, you know, there's SECs being hinted coming in October. However, the cryptocurrency picked up early today in response to US uh, Securities Exchange Commission, Gary Gensler reiterating support for a narrow class of Bitcoin ETFs that would invest in futures contracts instead of buying the cryptocurrency directly. This could happen in October, which is really bullish for Bitcoin in general. And you can see that in Canada, they actually just approved a, a ETF combining Bitcoin and Ethereum. So basically, if you guys don't know what an ETF is in very simple layman's terms, an exchange traded fund is a type of security that tracks the index sector commodity or other asset, but which can be purchased or sold on a stock exchange the same way a regular stock can. So basically giving more access to institutional demand. Really quickly, um, just in case you guys didn't understand my last video, I want to go over the brief, I guess you can say, repercussions of China's ban. The ban was actually endorsed by 10 government bureaus um, and institutions. So there was a little bit more people, uh, you know, accepting of this ban in China. It's banning stable coins outright. Uh, it's banning cryptocurrency trading. Uh, also, the promotion of crypto. So people like me will be banned in China. The government will have no obligation to protect citizens who willingly buy into crypto. So it's really interesting because you can see kind of the effects of what went on. Basically, miners have already left China. So we're seeing the decentralization of the mining power. and We see it all over the world. Uh, and the mining power is coming back. The hash rate is definitely coming back. Uh, we see now the mining pools uh, stopping and halting on October 15th. Then we're seeing retail, you know, like the, the websites, uh, CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, TradingView getting banned. Now we're seeing centralized exchanges getting banned. And obviously DeFi projects have to kind of stop Chinese IP addresses from accessing them. So in general, you see what we saw was first the hash power and the mining. Now we're seeing pretty much every other element of cryptocurrency that are going to have to be decentralized. And this is the perfect case study. Uh, if we see other countries get negative towards crypto or whatever the case is, China's one of the biggest economies, if not the biggest economy on, on planet Earth. And we can see that, you know, cryptocurrency is very adaptable, right? And, and they're just moving on a dime. And I think this is obviously a short term bad thing, but in the long term, uh, it's going to be really bullish and, and China could be left behind like pretty much every other major business that got banned. Right. So in other news, just really quickly, we're almost done. And then we're going to go into the altcoins. Bloomberg crypto private equity billionaire Orlando Bravo says he owns Bitcoin. It's very bullish. This is recent news, September 30th. Uh, there's people that are really bullish. Also, Morgan Stanley doubled down on Grayscale, uh, buying more Bitcoin. Kind of crazy. They're going really hard. Also, the travel wallet is seeing a uh, consistent growth, which is the wallet created by El Salvador. And you can see here that they have on average 65,437 transactions per second. So that's crazy. Um, and then I thought this was really good information right here by Plan B. He created the stock to flow model. What will trigger the next leg of the Bitcoin bull run? An ETF approval. This is what I've been saying over and over again, you know, for Bitcoin in October, na uh, nation adoption or El Salvador, like the next El Salvador. We have the Apple, Amazon, Google adoption. Here's just a couple of things. The next Michael Saylor. There's just so many uh, different catalysts that could happen for cryptocurrency. And this is the best time to do it considering, you know, the inflation and the macroeconomic environment. Um, let's go into DeFi news as well as some altcoin news. As you can see, Visa develops interoperability concept for central bank digital currency payments. It's getting crazy out here. Now we see, uh, you know, for example, in the last video, we talked about Robinhood uh, pretty much trying to accept DeFi. Now we're seeing Visa and the big companies. It's literally like the governments against the companies. And once you see the, you know, the companies adopt it, they have a financial incentive. It's almost like do or die. The government is kind of acting out of like what they want. Like, uh, you know, they're just trying to stay elected in a lot of cases. They're trying to stay uh, in power. Uh, so they're making these irrational decisions. 
when it comes to an actual company, it's either they make the right decisions or they go bankrupt, right? They, they stop making money. So you'll see these big time companies continue to adopt cryptocurrency because it's a get with it or get left behind scenario. There's a reason why I say this in all of my videos at the end. They could stop it as much as they want. They could try to stop it as much as they want. But at the end of the day, it is a get with it or get left. They will get left behind, right? And governments have been getting left behind for you know, 50, 100 years, whatever you want to call it. Uh, in other news, Axie Infinity just airdropped 800,000 AXS, over 60 million at the current rate to early adopters. So if you're involved with Axie Infinity in 2020, I believe August, uh, you should have some free AXS in your wallet. Also, this was really interesting. As you can see here, here's a sneak peek working on NFT profile verification. So I'm not going to go over the video, but you can see that you'll be able to showcase your NFTs on Twitter, which in my opinion, Twitter has the biggest NFT adoption crowd. So it's very interesting. Not only that, but again, um, this is confirming my fact that big companies will adopt cryptocurrency. They're going to adopt cryptocurrency before the governments do. And the government's going to try to regulate it just like they always do. A new proposal for Ethereum ERC4377 hints at a wallet recovery functionality. So one of the biggest problems with cryptocurrency is people lose their wallets. They lose their private keys. They lose their password, whatever the case is. So on Ethereum, you could potentially recover it through social metrics, right? Which is a, the same feature you get with centralized entities, right? So it's really interesting that they're going to put that into the blockchain. It will make the user face of Ethereum much better, especially when we saw that recent mishap where you know they sent a hundred thousand dollars worth of tether in the last video and they spent like 23 million in transaction fees. we need things that make this wallet problem much easier uh and this is a step in the right direction so kudos for ethereum so let's go into the last part of the video which i thought was the most important we're gonna be looking at some old points here but first we have to kind of look at the market we see uh you know kind of a falling wedge here for the altcoin index perpetual futures it basically takes every altcoin in comparison to btc we can see that we have a falling wedge here, which is a clear continuation pattern to the upside. We should see a breakout to the upside. So that means it's good for all coins, right? Uh, if we look at ETH BTC, what I use Ethereum for as a leading indicator for all coin cycles, uh, you can see an, a symmetrical triangle here, again, confirming the same thing. We should see a big breakout to the upside, right? Um, and this is for all coins in general. Top 100 all coins versus Bitcoin dominance. You can see it's kind of testing the all-time high. Uh, this is a high area of volume. Um, I do expect it to go further. So old coins are going to do better than Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, hinting at an old coin season. Also, if we look at some sectors over here in the bottom left hand corner, you, you can see that smart contract platforms have accumulated 88% of all the money in crypto, decentralized exchanges, 35% centralized exchanges, 33 Web3. So as you can see, Web3 and DeFi have the most room to grow, uh, but smart contract platforms are pretty consistent. So you'll see the reasoning behind my picks. As you can see here, uh, the first pick is pretty obvious. Polkadot. Okay. Polkadot. I'm just say right here, three words, parachain slot auctions. Okay. They're coming out with parachain slot auctions. Kasama already had their slot auctions. And when this happens, basically to participate in the auction, you have to accumulate dot massive amounts of dot. Basically to get a slot, the way the auctions work, you don't know what your competitor is bidding. So you basically just have to accumulate as much dot as you possibly can and bid it <laughs> in this uh, slot auction war. So you're going to see a lot of big companies start accumulating dot to participate in this because we know it's layer zero. It's going to increase security, transaction speeds, et cetera, et cetera. And when the, just the hype, I mean, it doesn't even have to, we don't have to talk about the slot auctions, but just the hype around Polkadot, they're coming soon. I showed you guys multiple videos on Gavin Wood hinting it's coming soon. When this comes out, this is going to be huge. And I do expect the price to at least double, maybe even triple um, in the next couple of months. Filecoin, extremely undervalued. The guys, it's not going to be an in-depth um, you know, video where I go into extreme detail about the coins because you know, I've already made uh, in-depth videos about these specific coins, but you can see the price, the risk to reward is really good right now. And this is considered Web3. This is considered smart contract platform, you know, by metrics. I know it's not an actual smart contract platform, Polkadot, but it's considered that. And you can see right here, the all-time high was uh, $236 and it's currently sitting at right now $59.81. Now, this is like a, a world-class product. They're about like, I think 20 on coin uh, Gecko. So this is relatively safe. Same thing as Polkadot. Polkadot's a top 10 coin. Filecoin, relatively safe. It's extremely undervalued in my personal opinion in the grand scheme of things, especially to risk to reward right here in April. Like I said, um, it was pretty high. It's like a 5X. Uh, so we have a 5X to all time high, four to 5X. Uh, and Filecoin is basically decentralized storage application. Everybody knows about it already in cryptocurrency. The fundamentals are extremely uh, strong. As you can see, let me correct myself, it's ranked number 24 
circulating supply, 109 million. Market cap is 6.5 billion. Extremely safe to put your money in. Now, again, it's safe in relative terms to cryptocurrency market. If you know cryptocurrency is risky in general, so have good risk management. You should be good to go, but decentralized cloud storage, guys, we're seeing regulation come into play and they could start banning like things like Amazon Web Services and you know all of these cloud storages where a lot of the DeFi applications you use are currently being run on these decentralized entities. Like, it's stupid, but it's true. Um, a lot of the DeFi projects, even just the websites or whatever the case is, a lot of infrastructure in cryptocurrency is being run on centralized servers. So if that ever becomes a reality, we could see a lot of adoption into decentralized solutions like Filecoin. Filecoin is the premier of the best uh, decentralized file storage solution. I called Filecoin way back here, back in the day. I have a little bag, but I'm looking to accumulate more because I think the risk to reward is really good. And then the last coin, okay, the last point is Phantom. I've been talking about it for a while. Like I said, uh, you know, smart contracts are going to have the most adoption probably in, in the future. And the thing is, Phantom has full smart contract capabilities with decentralized application. They have a fund that's paying other DeFi products to come on Phantom. They have an NFT bridge to ERC-20. So they have a whole NFT ecosystem. And for some reason, they're still ranked number 50 something. Like it's by like 50 or 49 or something like that. Let's come down here. They're still undervalued in my personal opinion. This is at least a top 20 project and there's number 49. So we could easily see a double to triple if the market continues to grow. And Phantom, in my personal opinion, is still extremely undervalued. They have a whole entire ecosystem. Like look at some of the coins that are above it. Aave is above it. Like it should not be that high. In my personal opinion, when it comes to Phantom, being that they have a working solution, I've used the Phantom network, the Opera network, the transaction fees are very, very cheap. I think it needs to see more adoption um, in general. And of course we have the father of DeFi, Andre Cornier, developing on it actively, uh, bringing users from DeFi over to Phantom. So in general, I, I still think it's undervalued. Even though we called it at 92 cents, I still think it has a lot of room to grow. These three coins are relatively safe, but if you notice, you know, I picked uh, when it comes to growth, if we go over here to Mazari, when it comes to growth, DeFi and Web3 haven't grown as much as smart contract platforms. So this one's top 10, Polkadot's top 10, right? Filecoin is uh, top 25, right? So these are relatively safe, but if we come over here, you can see I picked um, on the lower half. And the reason why I do that is because guys, remember, if you bought a coin, like let's say, uh, you know, number 75 by market capitalization, right? And I actually did really good with this in Chainlink, for example, I bought Chainlink when it was like number 150 by market cap size or whatever the case is. I did like at least like a 50X on Chainlink. Chainlink got up to top 10 and then I was, I was calling for it to fall. I literally told everybody um, on my YouTube channel as well as people in my group, I was like, look, Chainlink's top 10. It's overvalued. Why don't you find like other coins that are undervalued right now? Now look at Chainlink. Uh, actually, I think Chainlink was like top five at one point or top six or something like that. And you can see it fall. You want to find projects that are down here. It's very simple. You want to find projects that are down here, they're going to come up. That simple, right? Um, don't overcomplicate it, okay? I know you guys made money off some projects, but do not get super wrapped up and emotional. The goal here is to make money in stat sats, but that's it for this video, guys. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism, subscribe for more video updates, and like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will be left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.